Hey guys, it's Chloe Tan. I'm currently a rising sophomore at UChicago, and I'm here to share with you my UChicago Uncommon essay. Um, I've already filmed this video once, but due to audio quality reasons... Hi guys, it's Chloe Tan. I decided to refilm it for you guys, and so here I am again today. Today is also the last day of my Beijing internship, if you guys are interested. UChicago doesn't start school until the 1st of October, so technically for us, it is still summer break. I know for a lot of you, you guys are either caught in between like the college move-in orientation week time or school has already started for you guys or you're struggling with college apps. Honestly, one of the worst experiences you can ever have in like high school life. Also one of the reasons why I started this channel is because I got a lot of questions about my application, about my essays, and I decided to Make this channel for you guys. Let's just get started. The prompt I selected for my U Chicago Uncommon essay was The late New York Times photographer Bill Cunningham once said, Fashion is the armor to survive the reality of everyday life. I don't think you could do away with it. It would be like doing away with civilization. Tell us about your armor. And this is inspired by Adam Berger, class of 2020. The reason why I picked this prompt was because I had already written two personal statements and one of my personal statements became the Common App essay and I felt like I really liked my other essay. And so even though I was totally willing to write another U Chicago on Common essay just for U Chicago, I really felt like I had put like the best of my, a little bit of my writing into that second personal statement. So I really wanted to find a way to incorporate that into my application. Some of you may ask why didn't I pick the prompt where, you know, I get to write the prompt myself. Um, and the answer to that is honestly because I didn't know how to correctly phrase a prompt. I felt like anything I came up with was like very trite, very mundane, and it made my essay more importantly seem mundane. For example, if I ask you what your favorite color is and you say blue, that's much more mundane if I had asked you like what's your vision of the world in like 10 years and you say blue, right? Like that's immediately just like a little bit more interesting. It sparks a little bit more of your interest. And so I really wanted that kind of feeling and I felt like my essay could fit that. So moving on to how I decide about what I want to write about for my essay. Um, I went through a lot of different brainstorming processes for this like personal statement too and I ended up picking something that would demonstrate another side of myself. So my big PS, like my like main PS, which I will link in this video as well, was about me being really inquisitive uh, and sometimes being a little bit like insensitive and how I kind of like learned from that. My why essay, which is found earlier on my channel, focused more about like my love for you Chicago and my unique perspective through pretending to be a gargoyle. And this one, which is my uncommon supplement, I wanted to demonstrate more my writing skills and my ability to craft you very intricate and beautiful images with just a couple words. So with that in mind, let's just go into reading a bit of my essay, analyzing a bit of it, and so on and so forth. Pick up a pen gently, for the ink that flows within the nib is your weapon. Caress the pen's protective shell of steel or tungsten carbide, for you must feel the strength of the armor that protects its creator. We always say that the pen is mightier than the sword, but what we mean is that the creations expressed with ink are mightier than any man-made weapon. Yet the body of the pen will be hold it with, write with, and case ink with. They are a noble suit of armor that protects the wearer within. They define the exterior used to create. They are meant to be used. So you guys probably won't be able to tell, but these two paragraphs were added on. So they were not originally a part of the like essay. I kind of added them on to fit the prompt a bit better and also to kind of connect writing with like the pen and with the armor because I felt that it was very difficult um, for people to immediately make that connection. So I wanted to make that extremely clear at the get-go. Also note that my language is very... My language throughout this essay also varies between being fragmented and being extremely long. Like for example, the sentence that starts with pick up a pen gently. There's no subject. I'm not, I didn't say who I'm telling to pick up the pen. It's very abstract, but yet it's also contrasted with these like long, more flowy sentences that I really like to write. So that's my personal writing style, but I think it gives a quite like punchy edge, even when you're writing more flowery language. Take a beautiful original metaphor a particular combination of adjectives and a juxtaposition that draws us in with its swooping curves and creativity. Wear it on your skin. Its silver plate does not cling to your pores and follies. The coat of mail does not stick, for it has its own metallic swooping curves and shines. Sometimes we get hung up on picking the perfect exterior, endless browsing and trials to find a pretty packaged pen, endless stationary stores and new pens. Like my metaphors, I prefer to keep using one that fits the hand, though old and tattered, outdated, and somewhat scorned. So this is kind of demonstrating the, the like starting to hint at the main like purpose of my essay, which is that um, 
instead of like endeavoring in like the endless pursuit of like new, unique, non-cliche, you know, turns of phrases and therefore lifestyles, I prefer to stick to those that, you know, suit me. And it's a little bit more humbled, it's a little bit more classic, it's a little bit more natural, and that's the kind of like writing style that I personally do prefer. This is also really like demonstrative in my like love of poetry. Like there's nothing against, you know, Rupi Carr and like Instagram poetry and the rise of like Tumblr lines and all of that, but I am more of like a classic poetry person. And so when I was writing this paragraph I remember channeling that energy just kind of like putting it in here the coined metaphor remains at the twirl of people's tongues, epochs after creation, so much so that it becomes embedded into the English language. But caliber is a catalyst for corrosion and you lovingly overuse the protective armor. It rusts and threatens to break. And when people begin to tire of it and roll their eyes at its mention, you stop speaking it and it dies. Dead metaphors fascinate me. So this is the paragraph where I start to introduce the idea of like dead metaphors. I remember the first time reading about dead metaphors and finding it online and I was like, oh my god, this makes so much sense, right? Like there are these phrases that we just stop using in everyday life because they suddenly become trite, even though they might be the most apt expression for a certain uh, emotion, but we just don't use it because, because, right? And I was really fascinated with how dead metaphors are created, which kind of inspired this essay. Was time flies conceived in a room with billowy smoke by an unknotted English gentleman whilst turning a pocket watch in his hand softly to match the gentle turning of an idea in his mind? I wondered when the phrase was raised in English class. Perhaps the fugitive scribe who fashioned avoiding it like the plague meant it hysterically as he stumbled on the phrase in a dead alleyway that reeked with the black stench of pestilence. Maybe a wanderlusting poet with a lopsided grin riding on his steed was so hungry that he proclaimed that he could, and perhaps did, eat his horse. At this, I laughed. So this is when I gave you some examples uh, of what dead metaphors were and also some, you know, potential scenarios in which these arise just to kind of, you know, paint the image and bring these to life. Basically, bring them from two-dimensional phrases into like creations and because we don't really ever think about where these words come from. So I just came up with like mini stories and like backgrounds for each. I think the English gentleman, horror-stricken scrivener, and the well-fed, if not slightly nefarious, poet all went to rest, satisfied that their lines would live on, unconcerned that the same lines had put blood into the hackneyed. They are the glorious knights of old, buried with lackluster and overused silver carapaces. So my camera died, but now it is fixed. We are back in business. So after this paragraph, what I really wanted to do was to kind of demonstrate how that, you know, a beautiful image of creating these metaphors have now become irrelevant and now it's shifted to more describing these individual creators as knights and that's because I start to talk about my personal experiences so I've kind of shifted from talking this about this like very abstract idea of a metaphor into something that is more concrete into talking about the people and then talking about me as an individual so that's the way I kind of like structured this essay for it to make sense all right we get hung up on how trite and terrifyingly normal they are and don't want to speak them. Worried that our lines and lives too would end up like a phrase tossed in a sea of others. But why? Why do we polish and embellish our protective armor so that it blinds others on the same battlefield? This is the main transition part into like my personal idea. I revel in the possibilities of my life, reflected in writing as permanent and classic as a metaphor, hard as silver and steel. To me, there is a beauty in being remembered, albeit anonymously, this way. Aspiring to be like the creators of dead metaphors, we remember their brainchild, but not themselves. I think this is a goal worthy of a lifetime, of striving to create new and original combinations of black and white letters. I find myself punning almost subconsciously. Sometimes I employ my silver carapace, like an anticlimactic matuzion, to clang through tense and awkward um now what situations. Other times I rouse rounds of eye rolling by tossing a jest into serious political discussions. When as an English class my thoughts on Whitman's The Earth by the Sky stayed with, with the daily close of their junction, I replied with a simple, well, what was Whitman being so metaphor? A few crisp chuckles ensued. Metaphors, synecdoches, puns, euphemisms, personifications, they are as much protection as they are offensive weapons used in a self-imagined battle with my imagination set in everyday life. So this is me, you know, finally transitioning to my everyday life. And here I talk about the first use of like metaphors and like actual language, which is, you know, an English class or just like a more, like a more relatable use of language. 
I pun a lot in my like why I say in my personal statement too so I kind of wanted to like bring that idea back um here just like you know just like highlight it a little bit all right the last sentence though it is a transition into my more serious part in full magnificent medieval glory, I use my metaphors as an outlet for a truth I demand to tell, for a higher chivalric purpose. When the school paper boulderized my story on how to identify and cope with depression beyond recognition because it was too difficult for students to understand, which is the school's armor against bad publicity, I swallowed hard, calmed down, and instead submitted an innocent tale about a girl who kept a shadowy and elusive cat that gave her constant and painful scratches on her arms and how she healed them gently. The psychology club thanked me in a passing line in their mental health article. In one white writer's words, we've all had to cope with a scratchy cat. Sometimes it's about more than just wit. So here I kind of hint at the impact that I've wanted to achieve with my words within school. And I've kind of like hint at just like my personal beliefs about how language should be used, which I definitely didn't focus on, but I thought it was really, I thought it was much more telling for me to, you know, link up this like very abstract idea into something more concrete and also showed a little bit more about myself. The desire to instill my thoughts and beliefs in my writing persists. I will not deny the nights I sit and polish my full steel plate harness rigorously. Yet I write not to be remembered as an individual. My small quips are meant to be whispered in casual conversations, my bonmonts sometimes shown in print and given undivided attention in class. I want my words to take their place among countless others. I want to stand among countless others on a battlefield. I write to be remembered as part of a greater whole. I'm not concerned with I simply must be special, the must try to be most original, because I am too in love with discovering 101 ways to metaphorically express happiness, or comparing spiky tumblebeads with my hedgehogs, or finding new ways to phrase neglected and serious issues, or attempting to fit in polys and dents. I pick up the pen gently and write myself a suit of armor. This last paragraph I really enjoyed. I kind of tied in my entire essay. Um, as you can tell with the Paulus and Denton at the end of the last paragraph, I highlighted all the different like aspects of writing that I talked about and also just mixed in a little bit of my like quirkiness. Um, I, the reason why I talked about hedgehogs, by the way, is also because I mentioned hedgehogs in my like additional informations essay, um, which I did write in like an additional like 400 500 words for the common app and that was under like the do you have any more you have to say section so the way the way i wrapped up my essay i actually did really enjoy and the reason why i did that was because i wanted something a little punchy but not too overdone like a dead metaphor you know um so i thought something simple and referring back to like the whole pen imagery was very apt by the way the word count for this essay was 977 words so you chicago does not have a word cap for its supplements and I definitely explored that fully like I pushed the word limit for a lot of my essays um, and for Yu Chicago essays I just directly went out of it um, I almost wrote like a thousand words I think for my original Y essay and I think it did go down to like at least like 800 words um, so for me it's all about whether can you keep the reader's attention can you make the admissions officer slow down and not skip your writing so that was really important to me um other than that though i don't think word count matters too much if you found this video useful or helpful in any way or if you liked my essay or want to know more about it um please go ahead and leave a comment below support this channel and like leave a subscribe leave a like if you found it helpful i will be posting more college app videos if you guys want go ahead and comment any questions or anything you have down below and i'll be sure to answer them in time Good luck on your college app journey and remember that there's always a community online to support you. Um, a lot of YouTubers do this and I'm pretty sure their comment sections are also full of like questions and answers. Um, so feel free to reach out. I'm sure they, us, me, we're all super willing to, to help. Yeah. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.